Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. See General Hospital's star John J. York and Finola Hughes for the fans' new video. Please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It's hard to believe after more than three decades, but there was a tie before Max Scorpio. Not to mention his and Felicia's bar, the floating rib, were mainstays on General Hospital. There was also a time when we weren't even sure how much we could trust the character. John J. York's debut as Robert Scorpio's little brother on February 18, 1991, left us with a whole slew of questions. Not to mention the urge to grab a towel. It was definitely one of the most memorable character debuts we've ever seen. And that's something that Finola Hughes, Anna, echoed when she shared General Hospi Tales' commemorative tweet. Remember this so well, the actress tweeted with a heart. And how could she not? It was still Valentine's Day in Port Charles back in 1991, despite being a few days later in the real world, when one of the Quartermain ships ran into problems docking. Its explosive crash sent Robert, Anna, and a slew of protesters ducking for cover as the then police chief tried restoring order. Folks from the ship were swimming for their lives being pulled into rescue boats and yanked up onto the docks. Robert was right at the edge of the action, helping to save who he could when one man swam up, clearly exhausted and rested at the edge of the docks. When Scorpio spotted him, he hauled the stranger out of the freezing bay, stood him up, and pushed him back into the waters with a scream. Robert, who was that? Anna asked as she helped her ex up from the water's edge. My brother, Robert replied. Max Scorpio had arrived. Though he eventually turned out to be one of the nicest of nice guys, his beginnings had us all wondering just how awful a human he was. The two brothers were estranged, as Robert accused Mac of being a killer. He was also sure the newcomer caused the explosion on the ship, and when someone was trying to kill a PCP chief, Mac was accused of that too. None of it was true, of course, and the deaths that had turned Robert against his brother happened when Mac crashed his plane, killing their parents and Robert's fiance, Lily. It was a tragic accident, not a willful murder. In time, the brothers reconciled, and Mac settled into life in Port Charles, even taking over as police commissioner from his brother. In time, he found true love with Felicia and became a better father to Maxie than Frisco ever was. The floating rib owner's gone through a lot over the years, but as York himself tweeted of Max Devitt, Wow, seems like it just happened yesterday, 31 years ago. Here's to over three decades of fun in Port Charles, and hopefully many more wild adventures to come. It's been a long, long time since Soaps made a real and regular concerted effort to enlighten viewers as well as entertain them. Our theory around the office water cooler is that they're just too scared of turning off any segment of the audience to dare touch a topic as hot as, say, politics or religion. That could be about to change, though, at least at General Hospital. The show has beautifully set up Blaze's mother Natalia, to be played by All My Children vet Eva LaRue Maria, as a polarizing figure. Her rigid religious beliefs, Blaze told girlfriend Christina, have made the singer reluctant to come out to her family. What an opportunity for incoming head writers Elizabeth Court and Patrick Mulcahy to address an issue that not only affects Blaze, a character about whom we've come to care an awful lot, but also a segment of fans. There are kids out there who are literally kicked out, disowned by their parents just for being LGBTQ+. They're not all as lucky as Aiden. And it doesn't matter how often you ask, what God would be small-minded enough to condemn, of all things, love? You can't get through to those who twist faith into a tool to discriminate and ostracize. But maybe just maybe, in hands as capable as Court and Mulcahy's, a story told over time could open some minds and, ultimately, hearts. Maybe without shaking Natalia's belief in God, Blaze and the writers will be able to lead her to understand that if her God created Blaze and gave her the ultimate gift, love, then that can't be a mistake. And if God is okay with it, Natalia should be too. To us, Tyler Christopher 
was an actor of uncommon depth and unmatchable charisma. But to Drew Cheatwood, he was cuz. And in the wake of Christopher's passing on October 31, Cheatwood has come forward to shed some light on the man that he knew and loved. My cousin Tyler was something else. He was so kind and considerate. Generous beyond belief. Crazy funny. Unique, super smart, and so talented. Cheatwood began his Instagram post. His greatest joy and proudest accomplishment were his children, Grayson and Boheem, with second wife, Brian Pitigo. Years may have separated Cheatwood and Christopher, but not much else did. He was 10 years older than me like my brother Dirk, but he was like my second brother. Us three were as thick as thieves and the best of friends. We either lived with each other in California, or we would move our families to be near one another. If one moved, we all moved sort of thing. For a good few years there, the trio was even co-stars on General Hospital, where Christopher played Nicholas Cassadine and his cousins played Mott Muscle Milo and Max. We acted together, we traveled together. He and I loved Too Short and Common. 99% of the time that was what we played during our workouts, said Cheatwood. We worked out with one another, we partied, we laughed to no end, and we made each other stronger. I remember visiting the General Hospital set before I was on the show, he continued. I was walking up to the studio doors and Steve Burton, ex-Jason, and Tyler were just sitting on the stoop, sunning, and chatting in between scenes. I remember thinking Ty just looked like a movie star. He was so cool to me. He looked out for me along with my brother Dirk, especially when I first moved to L.A. he never stopped. So it was understandably hard on them when Cheatwood left the West Coast. The day we were moving back home to Michigan, he insisted he drive me to the U-Haul store because he knew we needed more boxes and supplies, Cheatwood recalled. We get there and he picks everything out, pays for it all, and tells me it's the least I can do, cuz. He hugged my wife, Jenna, daughter, Grace, and I goodbye and proceeds to stuff enough cash in my hand to get us through our cross-country drive and then some. Demanded we take it. Told me to get a protein shake on me. That was just his nature, he went on. He and Brian wished us luck and said they'd be praying for us. We all cried that day like crazy. Because we were moving, sure, but on a deeper level, I think we all knew a shift was happening and nothing would ever be the same. I'm grateful to have those moments as sad as they were, though. It shows me what a powerful effect he had on me and so many of us. That effect will not be diminished, even by Christopher's death. I will honor that effect and his memory going forward, Cheatwood said. I will miss him dearly. I pray for his kids and family. May God's hand be ever-present in their lives. I pray you are finally at peace, cousin. Without a doubt, Maxie's Halloween birth on November 5, 1990, that year, General Hospital stretched out the holiday for nearly a full week, is still one of the most beloved moments in the show's history. As with almost all things Jack Wagner and Christina Wagner back in Frisco and Felicia's heyday, you could say that their daughter's birth was about 90% humor and 10% heart. But that would imply that there wasn't plenty of emotion running through the whole event. Either way, the two certainly kept us laughing through almost the whole experience, even as their love for each other shone through the humor. Maxie's birth was not easy for Felicia. Actually, make that. Frisco's reaction to Maxie's birth was not easy for Felicia. The mom-to-be was perfectly serene from the moment she called Frisco in her sad clown Halloween costume to let him know that her labor had started to when she delivered Maxie in the time it takes to wash her hands. Frisco, on the other hand, drove her crazy, whether scrubbing her clown makeup off a bit too vigorously or insisting she was in pain when the only pain in the room was him. Then he had to be ushered out in a wheelchair due to the contractions he claimed he was having from sympathetic labor. Once he was gone, Felicia could finally relax a bit as the doctor checked on her. Outside, Frisco kept spiraling with his brother, Tony, who was walking around in what seemed to be a cow costume. It had a tail. 
That doctor's been in there quite a long time, hasn't he? Only in terms of seconds, Tony deadpanned. The second Tony's back was turned, though, Frisco barged back in to elbow the doc away and pester his wife some more. After snapping at him unsuccessfully to go away, Felicia set him off to call her grandmother for her and hopefully buy a few moments of peace. Realizing the nervous dad was going to be a problem in the delivery room, Tony, meanwhile, hatched a plan to keep him out, trap him in the scrub room. There, the brothers washed and scrubbed, with Tony insisting they had to be completely germ-free for the delivery. Annoyed but worried, Frisco kept scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing, until the doctor came in and announced to the stunned dad that both mother and baby were doing well. How can you help this Thanksgiving? Bring them home. Frisco rushed out with his sparklingly clean hands to meet his daughter, and from that moment on, the mood swung away from comedy to embrace the beauty of what had happened. Would you look at that? The new dad breathed in wonder when he saw his baby for the first time. Then Frisco's nervousness switched from overbearing to shy caution when Felicia asked if he wanted to hold their daughter. He, like so many new fathers, worried that he'd drop his infant. Felicia gently assured him he'd be fine, and Frisco picked the soon-to-be-named Maxie up and introduced himself. Hi, I'm your daddy, he cooed. You can call me Frisco. It's a miracle, isn't it? Felicia rhetorically asked with a little smile. Frisco looked from their baby to his wife and replied, I've never loved you more than I love you right now. And then, as they kissed, for a few brief moments, all was right in the world. Even if it did take a few more days for them to get their act together enough to give their daughter a name. Maria Maximiliana, Maxie Jones. Back in October, we alerted fans that General Hospital's Taj Bello, TJ, had graduated from the Los Angeles Film School, and now we've learned that he wasn't the only Port Charles actor sporting a cap and gown that night. Donald Turner, Curtis, posted four videos from the ceremony, where he was presented with a bachelor's degree of science in digital filmmaking. The ABC soap actor also shared a pic with Bellow showing off their diplomas and detailed. On Friday, October 27th, I was blessed to realize a dream that had eluded me for over 30 years. Not only that, he graduated summa cum laude, which means with the greatest honor. He went on to explain that when he started his academic journey, he wanted to live up to his mom's academic examples and share her love of learning. I can just hear her animated voice of approval now, he stated. I know she is pleased. I wish I could have seen her face in the crowd, however, her presence was slash is felt. He also made a point to congratulate all of the 2023 graduates and gave props to his nephew and friend Bello for staying with it and earning the win. You did it, sir. And not only did he feel graceful and know his mama would be proud, he had a message for fans and expressed, I thank you all in advance for your kind words, support, and well wishes. Remember, your direction is more important than your location, and it is never too late to put your dreams into action. We send Turner our congrats as well and looking forward to hearing what the future holds for him. We never expected to lose yet another beloved member of the daytime world or the General Hospital family this year, but sadly, we've all been grappling with another loss since learning that Tyler Christopher passed away on October 31. We can't imagine what his loved ones and family have been going through, nor how difficult it must be for his friends at General Hospital and across the daytime world. It's no surprise that the tribute started almost immediately, nor that Kimberly McCullough, who has been friends with Christopher since some of Robin and Nicholas' earliest days, had a poignant message to share. But while the sharing was, we hope, cathartic and comforting for McCullough, she also made clear in her Instagram post that she wanted to talk about her friend so that those who were saddened by the passing of Tyler Christopher could find a little joy and insight to who Tyler was. Let me tell you about my friend, Tyler Christopher. Robin's longtime portrayer said in the post's video. And over the course of nearly 20 Instagram stories, that's exactly what she did. 
she shared a beautiful tribute, filled with joyful memories and laden with so much emotion it tore at our hearts. For those who didn't get a chance to see it before it expired, or those who want to keep her words in your hearts forever, read on below. I want to talk about Tyler Christopher, the person, McCullough began. If you're a fan of his or even if you knew him personally, go on a walk with me. I first met Tyler when I was about 16, she recalled. And as some of you may know, Nicholas and Robin had a very sweet friendship. But so did Kimberly and Tyler. We were a part of this acting class, which is where I met a lot of my really good friends, and we were also part of a friend group. Once when I was going through a breakup, it was a really hard time in my life. I was extremely lonely, and he apologized for not being there for me. And he said, I hope you'll forgive me. And it made me feel like I wasn't crazy, that I was loved, and that Tyler really was my friend. I mean, what 20-something-year-old TV star at the height of his career says the words, I hope you'll forgive me? She marveled. But that's the kind of friendship we had. Tyler was like a big brother to me. And things were never romantic between us, which was great. It made our friendship that much sweeter and simpler. The second thing I want to tell you, McCullough continued, is how Tyler always supported me when I wanted to make a transition into directing and how much that meant. It was like he could see it as clearly as I could. He would always say, yeah, go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going. I know you're going to do it. Since leaving General Hospital full-time, McCullough has moved behind the scenes as an accomplished director working on everything from the Connors and one day at a time to high school music, the musical, the series, and Christopher stood by her every step of the way. He even went so far as to put me up in his house in Austin, Texas, while he was shooting a TV show, she shared. I was shadowing on an ABC family show, and he totally took care of me while I was there. He would even make coffee in the morning before I went to work, and leave me a little note, like, see you at work. It was just thoughtful. The third thing I want to tell you, McCullough added, is about how freaking funny this dude is. I remember Finola Hughes, Anna, came up to me one day after working with him, and she was like, I didn't know he was so funny. Tyler is so clever. He just says this stuff under his breath, and if you're not listening very carefully, you'll miss it. And I was like, I know I know. No one knows. He's a freaking stand-up comedian in the body of a prince. Tyler was so funny. The actress went on, her voice warming at the memories. He would tell these stories and my stomach would hurt so bad. I would cry like those cartoons where the tears shoot out of the side of your eyes. So, I guess my point to all this, McCullough explained, is to tell you that even though Tyler had his own struggles, he found a way to be all of these things for me as a friend. He found a way to be empathetic, generous, and had a way of just making me laugh like no one else could. We shared a love of hip-hop and robust sound systems in our cars. We shared a love of dogs, and we shared a love of finding the emotional truth in our craft. And even though I'm super sad today, she shared, her voice weighed down with emotion. I'm so grateful that I got to know someone like that and grateful that I got to have a good friend for over 30 years. Rest in peace, man. All we can say is that we're so sorry for her loss, but it sounds like in the years that they were friends, there was no shortage of joy. Our hearts and our thoughts are with McCullough and all those grieving Christopher. He will always be with us. Jonathan Jackson tweeted on November 1. The bond that he formed with Tyler Christopher, who played Nicholas to his lucky on General Hospital, was too great to be severed, even by death. My family and I are deeply saddened to learn of Tyler's passing, began Jackson, a five-time Daytime Emmy winner for his work on the soap. He was a beautiful soul with so much compassion, love, humor, and strength. I have so many memories both working together and journeying through different seasons of life together. I consider Tyler a brother as well as a friend, he added. Though Jackson left Port Charles for primetime in 2011, and both Lucky and Nicholas were recast several times, 
It never mattered how much time would pass between us talking. We were immediately present and back where we left off. Don't we all have friends like that? Or wish we did? Watch the dynamic duo in action in the emotional clip below. From there, Jackson echoed sentiments that we've heard time and again about Christopher and how tirelessly he worked for change. He loved deeply and had a great passion for life. Through all the trials, Tyler continued to fight back against the darkness and be a voice for mental health, compassion, and goodness in the world. Jackson said, I'm truly at a loss for words. Our love and prayers are with his family and children. 